Hi, you're watching Bread and Roses, a weekly political social magazine on New Channel TV. I'm Mariam Namazi and I'm presenting this week's program with my fantastic co-host Bahram Suroush and Faribors Puya. In this week's program, we're going to be speaking on the issue of stealthy freedom of women in Iran. Let's take a, sh a look at a short clip that we've put together so that you can see a little bit of background on the, on the issue. Stay with us. In Iran, veiling is compulsory. Transgressions are met with fines, harassment and imprisonment. Nonetheless, countless women in Iran have posted unveiled photos of themselves on a Facebook page called My Stealthy Freedom. One of the women writes under her photo, Let me live as I please. I have a small wish, which is as simple as being free to let the wind blow through my hair. It might seem crazy what I'm about to say. So she's here. In related news, six Iranian unveiled women and men dancing to Farrell Williams' happy song in a video on YouTube were arrested, mistreated and released on bail. Yeah, baby, by the way. What's interesting about the clip is that, um, you know, when you, when you look at the Islamic regime of Iran and just the inhumanity of that regime, you sort of think this is the most brilliant response to, to this sort of regime of horrors and inhumanity. It's, you know, unveiling, it's dancing, it's being happy. It's the perfect response to a, a horrendous regime. And, you know, it, it's interesting because um, one of the advisors to Khamenei, who is the supreme spiritual leader, that name alone tells you a lot about what this regime represents, he had said that they've, uh, the regime has lost control on the issue of veiling. And the response is, yes, you have lost complete control. And this whole uh, you know, move of women unveiling in Iran, despite all the risks, is a huge challenge to this regime, to its very basic fundamentals. I think you're right. Uh, the whole uh, framework and structure of the Islamic regime is built around uh, its misogyny and being against women and the veil. And veil represents this, uh, the totality of the Islamic regime. By challenging the veil, by un the woman by un unveiling in Iran, they are actually challenging the, t challenging the totality of the Islamic regime. And this is the point where the Iranian society is gaining its confidence to the point, uh, is at the tipping point to m bring about fundamental change in society. I think that's very crucial and important. I think it's a basic right uh, for, uh, for any woman to wear whatever they want to wear. Okay, so that's the basic thing. And we should remember that uh, for 35 years, the um, government in Iran has uh, imposed veil on Iranian society. And when they t tried to do it back in 1979, because I, I would remember that. <laughs> and <laughs> actually, I was there myself at that time uh, because uh, Khomeini, you know, the found founder of the Islamic Republic, he said that uh, women should start wearing the veil um, from the following day in uh, public offices. And there was an outcry, and tens of thousands of women poured onto the streets without the veil, obviously, because they said, we haven't made a revolution to go back. We made a revolution against a dictator monarchy to go forward for more freedom for women. And, and so they took that back, but then reimposed it later, along with the whole repression that they unleashed on society, you know, tens of thousands of people being executed. So it was imposed on the uh, Iranian women. It wasn't something that the Iranian woman, w women voluntarily acquiesced to say, okay, we are going to wear the veil. You know, Iranian society is not, was not Islamic. It was not a veil society. And what's interesting is after 35 years of their rule, it's still not Islamic. The fact that they need all these morality patrols day in and day out to harass women, to arrest them. I mean, the punishment for unveiling, uh, forget about unveiling, just improper veiling in Iran is 10 days to two months in prison. Any transgression of Sharia law has a minimum of over 70 lashes. 
And there are so many cases of uh, women who've been harassed, intimidated, imprisoned as a result with acid thrown in their faces and attacks. You know, uh, one of the slogans of the Islamist thugs in Iran was either you veil or you get a beating, basically. Mm. Uh, I, I think you're right, but the, what has changed from 35 years ago is that you have a whole new generation of young people in Iran who see themselves as part of the global youth movement have come to the fore. Now there are teenagers, they are in their 20s, and they, uh, you know, they see the Islamic regime and the whole setup incompatible for what they want to do. They, and, and that's the spearheading not only the, the change in Iran, but represents this change uh, in Middle East as well. And I think that's a crucial mm. change that is taking place in the last few years, and we're going to see a lot more of this. I think that, that's the thing to watch. And uh, I think what this movement is saying is that uh, veil is not part of our culture. Despite all these you know, postmodernist um, um, statements that Iranian women themselves want to be um, veiled and wrap themselves up, it's their religion, this movement is saying, no, it's not. We want to live uh, like a human being. We don't want any imposition on us. So, uh, so the first thing, they want to uh, live like any human being in any free society. So if it, is, if it means challenging the government, if it means that the Islamic regime has to go up, you know, uh, because of this protest, that shows what kind of regime we are dealing with, that this whole ideology rests on veiling half the population. And veil is, although you know, it's just part of the problem, part of the issue of the women's oppression in Iran, but it, it is a very symbolic one, because when you challenge that, you, what you are challenging is the misogyny of the state as a whole. I mean, clearly, it's, it's very clear that you can't have an Islamic regime, an Islamic republic, with unveiled women walking down the streets. It's, it's just an impossibility. It's a contradiction in terms. It's, uh, you know, two different poles of reality. And in a sense, this is a huge challenge to the regime. Uh, they're very worried about it as well. And I think it's, it's really crucial that people support uh, the women who are coming out unveiled at great risk to themselves. But uh, as you said, it shows very clearly this is not people's culture. And if it was their culture, the regime wouldn't need to impose such huge amounts of force to police what people are just wearing in and, their day to day lives. And one of the characteristics of this new uh, uh, movement or the change that is taken in Iranian society in its publicness. It's open challenge to the Islamic Yeah, it's not stealth in, in any way, it is, is it? It's no. there for the world to see. I saw uh, recently last week a, a, a video that the, a young lady looks in the camera, takes her veil off, and says, Le let me breathe a bit of freedom. And she walks through the streets of Te Tehran, with, you know, and you can see the confidence. And you will see the photographs, videos of so many women who are doing it in different parts of Iran now as an open challenge to the Islamic regime. A very corrupt minority, a religious minority are in power, incompatible with the Iranian society and the young culture in Iran and that's what's the it what is them now they're sort of organizing this sort of stupid conferences called we are worried conferences and you could see it's sort of you know a small group of you know reactionary uh, misogynist. misogynist Islamists getting together and trying to organize conferences and when they organize demonstrations in Tehran against the well you see you know a couple of thousands of yeah. thugs who organized thugs they're mercenaries yeah. basically yeah. Yeah. very um, you know, the, the very small number of people who, who the only thing that they have in the power is the state means of suppression. And it's, you know, they, they look like a group of people in a castle surrounded by the whole population of the, you know, you know 60, 70 million people in Iran. And is any day that we could see that the society is going to turn on them big time. And so we need to watch this. Um, they say, as you mentioned yourself, uh, that they have lost control. Uh, for any Farsi speaker who follows their statements on a daily basis, you can see how they are blaming each other for having lost this control. And they don't have a solution. Uh, the latest is that they said that we should pub, uh, subsidize the production of the veil. <laughs> 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 and, and, and see, it, it might seem you know, uh, uh, absurd you know, uh, that they, they even talk in these terms. But the thing is, it shows that 
the um, They're grasping at straws, basically. How desperate they are, mm. because they're saying that women are not buying willingly the veil, they're throwing you it away. Subsidize. So they say we should publicize, sorry, subsidise the production of it. I think you're, you're right. I think one thing the Islamic regime is not very good at is managing subsidies. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, so, yeah, forget that. Don't, don't do that. Yeah. Away the subsidies you know, <laughs> yes. from basic food yeah. stuff. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, but, but that sh shows, that's symbolic you know, of, of the situation of the regime. It is surrounded by a population which is restless, which is fighting it, which is in protest. And this movement for unveiling is part of one aspect of a whole challenge and resistance against the regime. Let's go and see an interview that Reza Moradi and I did earlier this week with Kayvon Javid on this very issue. Let's hear what he has to say about it and we'll come back and discuss it further. Stay with us. در رابطه با همین صفحه فیسبوک آزادی های یواشکی و بیهجابی زنان در ایران نظرتون در رابطه با این چیه؟ اهمیتش چیه؟ من فکر میکنم یکی از مهمترین وقایه سیاسی روز ایرانه یکی از در دفاع از حقوق زن و حرکتی که تعرضی که زنان به فرهنگ اسلامی به حکومت اسلامی سازمان دادن و جمهوری اسلامی خوب درک کرده فهمیده اهمیتش رو میدونه جامعه خوب میدونه اهمیتش تو کجاست خصوصا زنا خوب میدونن که چه حرکت عظیمی رو شروع کردن و دنیا میدونه و مهمتر از این که کل دنیا اهمیت اینو فهمیده و توجهشون به مبارزه زنان علیه حکومت اسلامی جلب شده به نظر من جالبه مثلا بهش میگن آزادی های یواشکی ولی خیلی یواشکی اصلا به نظر نمیاد یعنی توی ازان عمومی اگه, اگه تو کوه بود و تو توی جای دربسته بود که قرار بود اینا عکس بگیرن برای آیندگان خودشون بذارن برای نواهاشون بذارن بگن دیدی مثلا مامان بزرگ یه روزی توی از ترس جمهوری اسلامی از وحشت جمهوری اسلامی توی محیط بسته عکس گرفته حالا تو ببین مامان بزرگت این شکلی بوده مدیا اجتماعی یعنی علنی انقلاب مصر با مدیا اجتماعی سازمان دادن وقتی از مصر ما میبینیم انقلابش رو میدیدیم هر روز تمام توجه این بود که بریم ببینیم مردم چیکار دارن میکنن تو ویدیوها ببینین انقلاب 88 اولین بار مدیا اجتماعی رو آورد میدون این هیچ چیز هواشکی نیست شاید بالاخره که هر کسی میخواست سازمانش بده و اهدافش و هر چی تو دلش بود تعرضی که زنان انجام دادن این دیگه قابل کنترل نیست اصلا هواشکی نیست کاملا علنی میدیا اجتماعی یعنی علنی تلویزیون یعنی علنی یوتیوب یعنی علنی کسی اینو اینو نبینه یعنی در واقع هیچ چیز از تبلیغات و از میدیا اجتماعی و از فعالیت اجتماعی نفهمیده یعنی یه چیزی که خب خیلی گفته میشه اینه که انقلاب آینده ایران زنانه خواهد بود این به نظرت وصل وصل هست به امیدوارم این امیدوارم اینجوری بشه یعنی ولی و و نگاه کنید زندگی زنا مثل به بردهداری تبدیل کردن وقتی شما از یه زن تو ایران حرف میزنید تو چارچوب حکومت اسلامی یعنی برده هایی که به زنجیر اسلام بسته شدن به زنجیر حکومت اسلامی بسته شدن کسایی که برای خلاف جریان بودن زندانی شدن بازداشت شدن کتک خوردن جریمه شدن پونز رو کلدشون بستن زدن که به عنوان تنبیه شلاخ خوردن بچه های کودکستانی رو مجبور کردن مقنعه بذارن برن تو مدرسه و زنا رو زنی که به طور مثال نمیتونه تو اتوبوس راحت باشه جاشو جدا کردن فوتبال رو میخوان جام جهانی رو همه دنیا میخوان فوتبال رو نگاه کنن میگن سینماها باید زنان و مردونه بشن که زنا نتونن برن فوتبال نگاه کنن به طور وحشیانه علیه زنا عکس العمل نشون داد جمهوری اسلامی یعنی فقط برای کنترل جامعه برای مرعوب کردن جامعه و خوشبختانه جامعه ایران سکولار ترین پیشروترین و بهترین خواسته ها رو داره برای برابری کامل زن مرد و هیچ جریانی دیگه نمیتونه زن ها رو برگردونه به این که برو آشپزی کن برو بچه داری کن برو سرویس جنسی بده اینا کارته اسلام اینو میگه میگه گروه پدر شما گروه پدر اسلامتون گروه پدر هر جریانی که میگه که زن باید سرویس بده به این اون زن 
انسان کامل با همه حقوقی که تو همه جامعه داره همه جامعه داره اونا باید برخوردار بشه و انقلاب بعدی مهر زنان بودن خودشو داره چاره ای نداره یه, یه ام, چیزی که هست خب بعضی میگن که خب به قول خودتون انقدر زن سرکوب و عذیت و آزار شده تو جمهوری اسلامی خب هجاب میگن یه بخششه یا بخش مهمش هم نیست فقر هست بیکاری هست احتیاط هست کلی مشکلات دیگه آیا این کمرنگ نمیکنه و مشکلات دیگه وقتی فقط روی هجاب داریم تمرکز میکنیم یه بخشی از مبارزه است مبارزه مردم ایران همه جانبه است سر دستمزد بالاتر مبارزه داری میشه کارگرها برای چل،, چل هزار کارگر تومار امضا کردن برای بالا رفتن دستمزدشون اعتصابات اعتراضات کارگری رو میبینیم تو همه بخش های جامعه مبارزه است میجوشه و این پرچمی بود که روز اول حکومت اسلامی به دست گرفت هجاب خمینی اومد گفت که هجاب باید جامعه هجاب داشته باشه سال پنج... اسفند 57 زنا بلند شدن هنوز جمهوری اسلامی قدرتمند نبود هنوز حاکمیتش رو تثبیت نکرده بود تظاهرات چند ده هزار نفری کردن گفتن نه ولی حکومت اسلامی سرکوب کرد و برگشت این, این موج برگشت علیه اسلام سیاسی ببین امروز حداد عادل یه چیز خیلی جالبی گفت میگه که ما باید یارانه بدیم که زنها هجاب داشته باشن پول بدیم کسایی که هجاب سرشون بکنن برن تو خیابون که ما نشون بدیم که جمهوری اسلامی رو اسلام رو رایت میکنن و اسلام حکومت اسلامی قدرت داره تو این مملکت معلومه که بس بعد از 35 سال سرکوب و عذیت و آزار هنوز نتونستن هجاب رو تحمیل کنن این خیلی نه تنها نتونستن تحمیل کنن تا تا پیش از این حرکت آزادی های که, که خیلی هم با صدای بلند فقط باید آدم نابینا باشه نوین حرکت اینا رو ولی نگاه میکنیم دیگه ما قبلا که نگاه میکردیم بد هجابی مسئله بود ما تو نشریاتمون تو تماما نشون میدادیم میرفتیم این ور اونور پیدا کنیم که زنایی که لباس های شیک پوشیدن رنگی پوشیدن یا روسری هاشون پا. یه مدار بالاتر موهاشون رو نشون میدادیم ما میرفتیم اینا رو نشون میدادیم میگفتیم نبض جامعه اینجاست الان بد هجابی نیست خود حکومت میگه بی هجابی میگه همه جا رو گرفته هر هفته نماز جمعه های جمهوری اسلامی هر هفته نگاه بکنیم 15 تا خبر تو ایران و از جمله تن از جمعه سر مسئله هجابه چرا به خاطر اینکه قدرت جمهوری اسلامی رو زیر سوال برده و ببینید دوست آلمانی داشتیم رفت ایران گفت دیگه تابستونا نمیرم زن گفت دیگه تابستونا نمیرم گفت مردم از گرما چجوری این این زنا تو این مملکت زندگی میکنن سی پنج سال زندگی رو تو کلاس درس تو مدرسه تو کارخونه تو خیابون به زنا حروم کردن گفتم نمیخوایم و عقب روندن دیگه بد ایجابی نیست خوشبختانه ما با بیهجابی مطلق تو ایران رو رو هستیم جالبه یعنی یه بخشی از خب یه سری آدم میگن که این برمیگرده به آزادی هایی که روحانی قول داده بود میاره به جامعه میده بالاخره گفته بود یه خورده کمتر فشار میخواد روی زنا باشه به نظرت این وزیر رفت داره ارشاد همین, همین هفته وزیر ارشاد آقای خاتمی این روحانی هشدار داده سر مسئله بیهجابی سر این که همه چی داره زیر رو میشه کسی دیگه نمیتونه کنترل بکنه اگه روحانی قرار بود احمدی نژاد باشه با مشت آهنین جامعه رو سرکوب کنه اگه روحانی هست به خاطر اینکه مردم از جمهوری اسلامی دارن عبور میکنن مذهب اسلام و جمهوری اسلامی معیارشه قانون اساسی شه و تمام سرکوب هایی که هست بخشی از اونه جامعه داره جلو میره و حکومت بخش های مختلفش برای سرکوب جامعه برای کنترل جامعه راه های متفاوتی دارن در واقع گیجی های متفاوتی دارن روحانی یک بخش از گیجی حکومت که مونده در مقابل این سیل عظیم جامعه که تغییر میخواد اینا حکومتی هستن که میخوان جامعه رو مهار کنن و جامعه ای که از میخوان از اینا بگذرن آخرین سوال اینه که آینده این, این بیهجابی چیه؟ آینده این, این, این آینده به نظر من داره میره عمومی میشه تو خیابونها تو محل کار توی ادارات تو هر کجا بیهجابی نه بدهجابی بدهجابی که الان حرف اول جامعه ایران همه میدونن ولی بیهجابی به نظر من تو محلات جاهایی هست که حکومت کنترل شدیدی نداره عادی میشه میاد تو خیابونها و ما با یک جامعه روبرو خواهیم بود که بیهجابی تو خیابون ها هست جمهوری اسلامی هم امکان داره هنوز معلومه هست ولی قدرت تعرض نداره به این دلیل که دست به هر زنی بزنه کتک میخورن تو سال گذشته کلی ملا و این نهی از منکرها اینا کتک خوردن توسط مردم این میره به نظر من تو جامعه عادی تر و 
با قدرتی که زنها کسب می کنند بشه حرف اول جامعه I hope you enjoyed that interview with Kayvon Jabid. I think he raises quite an important issue on the, the matter of social media and how that's really helped to highlight the huge amounts of protests that we know already exist in Iran, especially if you look at the situation there, you can see it very clearly. But this has helped to bring it to the public eye. And, and in, in a sense, social media has been key in helping to, to do that. Now, going back to the issue of the veil, I mean, I think you know, it's important to say that the veil is, you know, people have a right to wear what they want, including to wear a veil. Um, but the reality is that, you know, a, a vast majority of people will most likely not wear the veil was it not imposed by force. And that has to be true uh, because if it wasn't, they wouldn't need to have, you know, patrols uh, going up and down the streets and harassing and intimidating yeah. people as was not the case in 1979, you know, and uh, we, the majority of the women were not wearing the veil, so it was imposed on them. So this uh, uh, protest movement is uh, uh, going back and saying publicly that uh, this is not our wish, this is not what we want to do. And um, the point you mentioned about social media and Kevin mentioned, the in interesting thing is that, well, first of all, we should point out that in Iran, you don't have full access to the, a lot of it is filtered. Exactly, okay. yeah. So imagine if it is, was not filtered, the amount of protests that would be reflected and highlighted on that. So the social media has facilitated um, and given expression to an already existing protest movement. So we used to see just single videos on YouTube, some, some women um, just without even completely unveiled going on the streets. And the reaction of the people generally is so good. That's yeah. the interesting thing. Yeah. Because the majority of the people feel the same. They sympathize with that. That's how they want it. Some people, of course, they would turn hurt, and, but they, you wouldn't see anyone objecting to yeah. it. And yeah. now this is happening on, on, on Facebook mm -hmm. and on social media, and it's becoming a norm. And the regime's uh, leading people are saying that you know, they've lost control and, uh, you know, they can't do anything about it. I mean, can I just also ask you something specific, and that's about Rouhani, because there are a lot of people uh, in the West, for example, who say, well, you know, this all has to do with Rouhani because he wants a more open society. Well, you know, they're executing more people than they did under Ahmadinejad, under this wonderful Rouhani and He's so on president. and so forth. He's yeah. the president. So well, what's your response to people uh, who would say that? Yeah. Of course, this is this has been going on for a, a long time. Re, Re, Rouhani tweets and says, "Oh, um, you know, you shouldn't be too harsh on the young people." Mm -hmm. Now he doesn't say to people that as he, his government, his actually the whole infrastructure of Islamic regime that he represents bans Twitter and social media in Iran. They just recently they wanted to actually uh, um, prosecute the. Uh, you know, the owner of Facebook in Iran. I mean, just, this is this is something we're facing it. Society, <laughs> it, 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 all of society in Iran, again to a point. Even these guys are worried. The, you know, they know that they can't control it. They know that the whole society gets just to try to pretend. Rouhani, there was a, car uh, a caricature sort of published on online uh, a few days ago. Rouhani is playing a guitar. At the end of the guitar, there is a noose hanging from there. That is actually that represents the totality of the Islamic regime. Always the Islamic regime had had characters who would, for the consumption of the West, particularly for the consumption of West, occasionally they make these noises, but they, they belong to the infrastructure of the Islamic regime. And this movement is going to wipe up the whole of uh, different functions of the Islamic Last regime. comment, because we have yeah, not very much time left. You remember that Rouhani has been one of the leading um, uh, you know, pillars of the regime from, from the, just from the beginning. And he's as much interested in the survival of the regime as the rest of them. Okay. But because of these uh, uh, efforts, recent efforts uh, to get rid of the economic sanctions and, and the fact that Iran has become highlighted, 
uh, it's on the news or every day. So they have to uh, present another. So that another picture of Iran, and that task is Rouhani's. But in actual fact, he's part of the same regime. And if there were any free elections, Rouhani would not have been elected. Okay, and and so people's choice is not Rouhani. And uh, uh, he, he, there is, I think it is uh, absurd to claim, you know, as some uh, in the media do, that Rouhani is apparently the soft, the good cop of the Iranian regime. They're part of the same system, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, I mean, it would be interesting to know what you viewers think about these, this issue. Um, you know, from, obviously from our perspective, the veil is a key issue. It's not a piece of cloth. It is a symbol of the regime, but it's also a symbol of discrimination against women, misogyny, the fact that they're considered second-class citizens. It doesn't also say very much um, about men and the fact that they are not able to control their urges if they see unveiled women. We know that's not the case, and uh, we know that this is the regime's culture, not people's culture. Tell us what you think. In the meanwhile, I just want to remind you that we have a fundraising campaign uh, that's uh, going on for another 15 days or so for a video mixer and uh, computer and so on for our program. If you can support us, you'll see information on it at the bottom of the screen. Please do help us. I hope you enjoyed this program. And until we see you again next week, we hope you have a wonderful week. Bye.